Hello students, welcome. Uh, in form one, lesson three previously, we are dealing with the chemistry, defining chemistry, uh, and lastly, we are dealing with the role of chemistry in the society. Today, in lesson four, we are dealing with apparatus used in chemistry. So, the study of chemistry involves practical activities in form of experiments. Remember, previously, we said there are some skills that you acquire in learning chemistry. Some of those were carrying out experiments. So, those experiments are done in the laboratory. So, what is a laboratory? So, laboratory is a special room or is a building. You can say laboratory is a building or a special room where chemicals and apparatus are kept and in which practical subjects such as chemistry, biology, and physics are studied. So, remember, these experiments are done using chemicals and some pieces of apparatus. So, most of these laboratory apparatus are made up of glass. So, we're having a tool, most laboratory apparatus are made up of glass and plastic. Why? This is because two main reasons. One is glasses are transparent. That's enough. If you're told give reason, two reasons why laboratory apparatus are made up of glass. You say because glasses are transparent. It's enough. Or you can say hence, it gives correct observations during a reaction. Or like even when you are measuring or uh, when you are determining the volume of uh, water, you can use that uh, glass so that you are able to read the meniscus on that measuring cylinder or the abrator that you're using. Okay, number two, we are told glasses and plastics do not react with most of the reagents used in the laboratory. So this means you can say glasses and plastic, they are unreactive. So if they are reactive, that means they are not going to react with the, the chemicals that are used in chemistry laboratory. So we are saying classes, we have some operators that are made up of class. One of them is here. So it's having reading and it's class. That means you can read what is inside, you can observe what is inside, and you can read those meniscus very well. So that's an example of uh, an operator which is made up of class. Next, we can have a one with plastic, and that here we are using glass measuring cylinder. Okay, those are, it is meniscus. Okay, let's go. We are told apparatus used in a chemistry laboratory uh, are classified as follow. The first one, we're having apparatus used for measuring volumes. Okay, we're told all apparatus used for measuring volumes of liquids are usually transparent, glass or plastic. So, the apparatus used for measuring volumes of liquids include the examples graduated beaker, we're having that beaker, uh, we're having graduated conical flask, we're having a measuring cylinder, we're having volumetric flask, we're having syringe, bibit, and we're having burit. So we're having graduated beakers, graduated conical flask, and measuring cylinder are used to measure approximate volume of liquid. So during the exam, you can be told, name two operators that are used for approximate measuring of volumes of liquids or volume of water maybe. So the answer, you are supposed to say graduated beaker, graduated conical flask, or you can talk about measuring cylinder. So in contrast to that, we're having some apparatus when that's used when fairly accurate volumes are required. So we're told when fairly accurate volumes are required, volumetric flask, syringe, Pibet and Buret are used. So let's just try to have a look for the apparatus that are used for approximate volume of liquids. And we said the three graduated beaker, it's having uh, readings, meniscus. Then we're having graduated conical flask, and we're having that side of measuring cylinder. So this is graduated beaker, uh, graduated conical flask, and measuring cylinder, cylinders are used to measure approximate volume of liquids okay thereafter we're having some which are used for accurate measuring of liquids or volumes some of them include the volumetric flask which we have here we are having that side of syringe we have here syringe we're having bibit here then finally we have burit here so remember learners 
this apparatus came with on different size that like you can see this volumetric flask is having 250 milliliters as it is volume but you can see a volumetric flask with 500 liters with the one liter with the two liter with five liters like that okay thereafter let's go to apparatus that are used for measuring temperature so apparatus that are used for measuring temperatures we're having temperature here so they are used to measure temperature changes that occurs when a certain reactions takes place so what is the apparatus that are used to measure temperature we're told temperature is measured using thermometers so we're told there are different types of thermometers which include or such as we're having the maximum and minimum thermometer we're having the clinical thermometer and we're having the general purpose thermometer so in the lab we are using the general purpose uh, thermometer which look like this okay this is a general purpose uh, thermometer i'm going to show you the next we are going to have apparatus used for measuring mass apparatus used for measuring mass so we are told mass is measured using weighing balances using weighing balances there are different types of weighing balances such as being balance we're having electronic balance and you're having that side of top burn balance the these are the ones that we are talking about we're having electronic balance there and we're having the beam balance down there so thereafter we are going to go to the side of uh, apparatus that are used for measuring time the apparatus that are used for measuring time we're having time here okay uh, apparatus used for measuring times uh, time are clocks and i mean watches and clocks so if you need accuracy we are told for accuracy during experiments in the laboratory stopwatches and clocks are used so if you're having stopwatch and stop clock they're used to measure uh, the accuracy of time then and uh, we have this here we're having stop watch and we're having stop clock so in the lab this is what we have this is the stop watch so that's the stop watch okay next in the next class we are going to go to the general laboratory apparatus or the other apparatus that we use in chemistry lab